Hey everyone, Curl the Artist here. We got a special treat for you guys today as Hershey and I had the opportunity to sit down with Ben Tennyson himself, Ryan Kelly, star of the 2009 live action adaptation of Alien Force titled Ben 10, Alien Swarm. Not only was he super fun to talk to and very enthusiastic about answering our questions, but he actually gave us info on a ton of stuff for things that I don't think we'd ever get answers for. For example, did you know that there actually was going to be an Ultimate Alien movie? And it got so far that Ryan Kelly had signed a contract for it and there was further discussion? Pretty crazy, right? We made a few posts on our social medias asking you guys what kind of questions we should ask Ryan Kelly, and now it's time to deliver. So without further ado, let's get started. Systems up. about yourself, uh, like your career breaking in uh, to acting, uh, what might have led you to Ben Tennyson, anything that you might want to share with us? Woo. Uh, well, I've been doing this a long time. I grew up in Chicago, kind of did some modeling and print work, which got me, you know, kind of just steamrolled into television and film. And then in terms of Ben 10, how I got that role, uh, I was filming another project. Basically, it was like, hey, there's this audition that they, they wanted to see me on. Um, and my schedule was was hectic. Um, so I was like, I just kept canceling them or kept saying, I can't make it, I can't make it, I can't make it. And, you know, most most auditions are like, just like anything in life, nine to five. Like you don't really audition after not 5 p.m. Well, they kept saying like, we'll see you at 7 p.m. Well, if you can't make that, we'll see you at 10 p.m. So I was like, what? what's going on? Anyways, I went to the audition at midnight, like 11.30 p.m. Cause I got oh, wow. upset from when I was filming, I know. And it was a straight cold read. It was the worst audition I've done in my entire life because I was focused on the material that I was filming that day. Yeah. Um, and not my audition. An audition is not something that's guaranteed. It's important, but like, you know, it's not as important as something that's gonna be on film forever. Um, so I went in and called it, and you know, I, I didn't know anything of Ben 10 at the time. So like the word Omnitrix, humongous, sort, these words were just, you know, I was stumbling over them like, uh, I left that audition like thinking, man, they're they're really upset that they just wasted their day waiting for me. I feel bad, like, ugh. Um, anyways, I, got, I was working again the next day and I got a call from a manager being like, I don't know what you did, Ryan, but they loved you. And I was like, what? I gotta, I gotta check this out. Um, and that's when I re researched Ben 10 and, and, and Saul. I was like, oh my gosh, I, I look just like the guy. At the time I had like beaver back, you know, I, I looked like the movie, if you see yeah. that's what I looked like. I had that hair, I had green eyes. I mean, there was no way I wasn't getting a callback. Thankfully, I then was able to prepare a lot more for the second callback and the third, um, and was able to to book the project. Do you remember a little bit about what the scene that you had to audition with was like? Oh, what a great question. Um, one of the scenes was uh, th that ended up making it in the film was um, where we're at the headquarters. We actually shot at the Georgia Aquarium through green screen, made it look like uh, our headquarters. We made use of an installation they actually have at the aquarium that we were able to get the blueprints for from the architects and build a virtual a version of that installation. And then we're able to match to the camera that was on set to, to place that in the scene and basically replace the, the, the real set elements with our, our digital light band installation. And once that's created, we're able to give that geometry to the compositors and uh, they were able to map all the graphics onto that and have it lock into the scene perfectly. And the second one, I think was the scene with, uh, with Grandpa Max. She told us the truth about one thing, you lied to us. I did that for your own good. You were too young to understand. I still don't understand. You can't judge her by what her father did. It's been a, it's been a long time. I haven't thought of that in forever. That was a great question. Yeah, so I think those were the two audition scenes. Of course, yeah. Well, I mean, Ben and Max, they have a pretty strong relationship yeah. throughout the series. So you got you got to nail that one. So when was the last time you saw the film? I recently saw it to do, uh, I talked a lot of it, a little bit about it on my YouTube channel. So I rewatched it. Watch this. Now kids, don't try this at home. Don't be jumping off motorcycles trying to transform into an alien, okay? I don't enjoy watching myself, so I don't really tend to continue to, to watch my stuff over. It's, uh, it's quite the opposite. I kind of see it when it comes out and then you try to never, because we're very critical of ourselves. Uh, when playing Ben, uh, of course, like one of the, the signature things about the character is his green jacket. Uh, so what, what was that like? Did they have you fitted for it or did they just like, give you the jacket and say, hope it fits. They had me fit. It was, if I remember correctly, it was the same, uh, if some really fancy uh, jacket maker who did like Brad Pitt stuff. And I, and, you know, don't quote me on this, but I, I think I remember them telling me like the jacket cost $10,000, you know, like, and, you know, and I'm like, what? Um, and then we had two of them made. So we had two of them. Um, and yeah, it was like snug. It fit perfect. It would never fit anyone else. It was it was literally tailored to my body. It was awesome. Do you, do you still have it? Uh, no, that's, so that's one of my biggest regrets. 
I tried. So trust me, since, definitely since there was two, when, or when I wrapped the film, um, I was like, hey, can I can I get one of the jackets? And they were like, no, well, in case we have to do reshoots or for, at the time, they were still considering a second and third film. So they were like, you know, we'll, we'll hold on to them and don't worry, we're gonna send you one. We'll send you one for sure. If I would have known what I knew now, I mean, I learned from that movie. If, if something's yours as a character on screen, take it and apologize later, you know, and deal with recoptions <laughs> later, because I 100%, if I could go back in time, I would have taken one of the jackets without asking. On Age of Ultron, there was a massive Avengers A, which is outside the uh, Avengers Center. Uh-huh. I have it. You yeah. have it. For instance, on Team Wolf, I had, I played a deputy, so I had my uniform, my badge, I have it been framed in this really cool thing that I got made. I would have done that for, it would have been this awesome, uh, you know, framed in a picture frame with like green, uh, green and black. Like, it just would have been really yeah. cool. And I, I wish I had that more than anything. Well, I, I'm a, a huge fan of the series. Uh, a few years ago, uh, when I got one of my first jobs, the first thing I saved up for was actually a replica. Yes. of the jacket from the film. So this is actually, yes. it's not just Ben's jacket, it's modeled after the Alien Swarm edition. Okay. Uh, not as, not, probably not as snug as yours. It's a, it's a pretty thick material. So like when I'm wearing it, I'm kind of like, you know, penguin arms. I can't I think I've, too much. I've tried on a bunch of different ones over the years because people, fans that I've met at like Comic Cons or things like that, that's actually one of the cooler ones because I've seen people that have that one. Oh, oh it's funny. Is, I did press for, I think it was over in, in when I did London and they gave me like a replica one to wear and mm -hmm. it was so bad. It, I was like swimming in it and I was like, what? why can't we have, where's the real one? Like, come, this is also, it was through Cartoon Network. So it was like, you guys have the real one somewhere. Why am I wearing this? And they were like pinning it in the back to make it like, it was just a mess. So you didn't get to keep the jacket, but did you get to keep the Omnitrix? Oh, so, so we had 10 of them made. Um, and I don't know what, but right around, so the, the, it was, it, it was awesome. The watch looked amazing. Um, right around the, the band, I guess you would call it the watch band. It was, it was made of paper. I'm kidding, but it, <laughs> I broke them all. Not to mention that your Omnitrix is busted. You broke it. You broke it and turned me into this kind of an improvement. If you ask me. So the last two days of filming, the last watch that we were using, uh, we were using like duct tape to keep it together to, cause it was, I broke them all. Um, from w when, whether I was doing like a stunt or running or whatever, they were constantly breaking. And and um, I, don't, I don't know why they were so flimsy. Um, so no, I didn't get to keep any of them, they were all busted. Moving on to a little bit about the series. Uh, have you watched any episodes of Ben 10 after the film or since being cast? And uh, if so, do you have a favorite episode or memorable uh, experience from the series? I watched it all when I, they, so we, they flew us down to Atlanta. I remember watching a bunch of episodes with the cast, you know, to get more information, all of us. And then even when I finished the film, I, I, I genuinely was a fan of the show. It's a great show. So I, I had watched it, you know, as the new episodes were coming. Ben 10 Alien Force was my, by far my favorite. I think, you know, not just being yeah. biased. I love that one. <laughs> it's, uh, it's by far the best one. Getting back to Alien Swarm, uh, when you mentioned uh, some of the Omnitrixes were used for stunts, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about what shooting some of the stunts were like or some of the visual effects? Well, my favorite thing about the visual effects is when Ben transforms, you know, he transformed into an alien. And as a, you know, as a real life actor, that means I go off screen. <laughs> so if we're doing anything like, you know, for instance, in the beginning of the movie, when he turns into Big Chill, he tries to turn into Spider Monkey, turns into Big Chill. The rest of the actors have to stay in there con and continue the scene. And they're, <laughs> they're actually just following a huge stick with... Uh, at the time, it was just green tape. Nowadays, things are a little bit different, but back then, uh, special effects weren't as good as they are today. So it was just a huge, like, I don't want to say broomstick, but some metal pole with a cross of neon green tape, and they're supposed to follow that. So I'm back behind the camera laughing at them, looking like idiots as they're running around to nothing, you know? But they're like, yeah. wait, now dodge it. And they're like, you know. You see a humongousaur? He smashes the chips and they go flying behind him over to the other eye line and they start to form spike wheels. Everyone look over the other eye line. And cut. Um, in terms of the stunts, you know, we at any movie you do, like when Ben was riding the motorcycle or things like that, we have a stunt man. Uh, that makes me look amazing, <laughs> makes it look like I can do really cool things. Some of the motorcycle scenes, uh, when it's close up, you do see you. Now, did you get to drive it or was it like in place and they put in a background later or? You got to rock into place. Uh, they didn't really trust me. I Nowadays, you know, I, I'm definitely, it was a big motorcycle. I was much smaller back then, it's uh, skinnier. So it was heavy. I remember being like, oh, this is, I could handle it. But still, I was like, this is a big bike. How was the chemistry on, on set between all the actors at the time? Was there like some synergy there? Everyone enjoying the roles, having fun? So like Galadriel played Gwen, 
uh, Nathan Keys, Alyssa Diaz. They were amazing. You know, we're, we're all around the same age. I had a blast with them. They brought us down to Atlanta. I think we had a little bit of rehearsals first, but nothing crazy. But we got we had at least a week of like bonding time. You know, we were all young out in, in Atlanta, just having fun. And they're all great human beings, very talented. So yeah, we I genuinely loved all of them. We were just having fun. I mean, you know, that's that's the thing about Ben 10 that's so amazing is that's I, I used I would trip out going to set. I'm like, dude, this is the dream. I go to set. All I'm doing is like playing fake monsters and driving around in green cars and a cool green jacket. Like this is fun. This is every day is different. And it's just, I had yeah. a blast from start to finish. How long was the shooting? I think it was seven weeks pretty quick. We did like a week. So I think it was eight weeks total because we did a week of rehearsals, kind of. Considering it was pretty quick, so there weren't any scenes that were maybe shot, but then cut away from the movie was just pretty straight. Okay, so that's another great question. Um, I'm sure there was. You got to understand this was over 10 years ago. Um, I definitely remember being not upset, but being like, oh, that didn't make it when I saw the premiere in London. And I can't for the life of me remember what that was. It was something cool, like a, a mini stunt or something where I was like, oh, that didn't make it chucks. But if anything, because the, the I don't want to say the budget was tight, but you know, it was, it was six weeks isn't a long. So Alex Winter had a tough schedule ahead of him. Um, and he was brilliant in terms of keeping us on schedule. And it's a tight schedule like that. And when you start getting behind, you start having to cut scenes and it it overall hurts the, the project. So, so I mean, Alex from the get go was like, I, this is not happening. We are not getting behind because every scene that we have is really important to the overall story. So we're gonna stay on track, you guys. We're gonna stay on track, you know, let's do this. So the larger things uh, like uh, the, he the visual effects heavy shots with the aliens. So there probably wasn't any aliens cut from the film. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then, uh, you know, maybe they had envisioned something longer or a little bit, but again, you know, they have a certain time limit, especially for a TV movie that it has to be in. We knew that there was going to need to be a lot of interaction between Humongousaur and the environment. And so early on, as we were bidding this, this show, we, you know, we're looking at how many different CG elements we were going to have to create. And they were numerous. It was going to have to be foot stomps, trails coming off of moving spiked wheels, uh, explosions, different elements. You know, that's the thing when you're filming this stuff, you see a storyboard of what it looks like. and You're like, oh, that could be pretty cool. So then when you actually get to see it, it's amazing. So what Turner Studios has done is they've taken storyboards that I created a while ago and we started to develop those. We took those boards and started to brainstorm with them, which was really great because it gave us the opportunity to kind of um, be creative and, you know, lend our creative talents to help in Alex realize his vision. I mean, it would be my dream to redo Ben 10 or see it done again with today's technology. Things like that are changing so fast. But at the time when I saw it, I, it was the first time I'd ever done anything with special effects. No, yeah, it, it would be cool to experiment with today, especially because of, you know, for example, a lot of the CW shows, like, you know, there's, there's a lot of like some crazy stuff they're pulling, like CGI gorillas, yeah. CGI shark creatures every week. I actually, I was I was watching some of your uh, YouTube videos uh, talking about uh, knowing uh, Tyler Hecklin, who's Superman right now. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be neat to see like a Superman Ben 10 crossover or on the CW. <laughs> see if they could get to open a portal and you hop through for hey. an episode. You know what, Superman? I used to have pajamas that looked just like your outfit. Y you... You did. Going back to your, your comment about the jackets, uh, where they were keeping it uh, in preparations for future films, do you know how far along uh, that process got liked or was it just uh, thoughts in the air at the time? When I signed my contract for uh, the first film, it was a three picture deal. So we were supposed to do three. Oh. And I was, <laughs> trust me, I was stoked. Uh, and here's how, and I was even more excited because I was younger, you know, I was in my early twenties. So I got paid on the first one. I was getting paid for the first one. I was getting paid for the double and triple on the third. So I was really excited. I was like, let's go. Yeah. And from what I heard, I'm not, don't, I can't quote me exactly on this because I was just hearing it from other people. I, I the head of uh, Cartoon Network and the head of the live action animation at the time uh, were disagreeing on something about the, the either the what's what to go move forward or something. Um, and then they decided to split ways. That was, uh, so at the time, Cartoon Network uh, had this special programming block called CN Real, where they were experimenting with a lot of live action uh, shows. In fact, uh, I don't know if you remember, but you were on an episode of Destroy, Build, Destroy uh, yeah. to help promote Ben 10. But yeah, I, I guess Cartoon Network, you know, being Cartoon Network, they, they wanted to move away from the live action stuff, but it's a shame. I mean, everybody would have loved to see an Ultimate Alien movie. Yeah, and it did very well so for Cartoon Network standards. The movie did excellent. So I, we thought for sure, like, you know, I, I remember yeah. having conversations and being like, yes, yes. And then when it did, it was just such a bummer. Speaking of Ben 10, a little bit more creative side of the spectrum. A lot of people as Ben 10 fans, they like to create their own aliens and creatures and stuff. If you can throw one into the Omnitrix, uh, what kind of creature do you think you would make? I'd like to take this time, you guys, apologize to the fans for Nanomech. 
Nanomech stunk. All right, I never, I never really liked it. It made sense in the movie, but later on, you know, I was like, ah, I, I was never a huge fan of Nanomech. And remember that our first priority. <laughs> Uh, it's hard to take you seriously with that voice. My favorite is humongous one. I like bigger the better. If I had an alien, it'd have to be something powerful. And I'd want it like overly powerful. We're just like, well, that's not even fair. So something like a, like, like a black hole or like void. And what he does is he just pops up black holes next to his enemies and they just get sucked away. You don't know where they go. <laughs> They're gone. It's like problem solved within a snapping your fingers. That would oh, save a lot of the fighting time. Just yeah, pop them know, all away. Be over. Just, and it's like, well, that he's too strong. Uh, is there a, a dream role you really wish you could play? So Ben 10 was my first dive into supernatural things. And ever since then, it is by far my favorite. Uh, I was then blessed to be on Team Wolf, which is also supernatural. The, what's so magical, I mean, one of the main reasons I, I became an actor and I'm still an actor is just daydreaming of amazing things you know when i grew up it was spider-man x-men things like like i always envisioned that i was that hero or even just had powers i still have dreams all the time at night of like flying or being able to read minds or whatever i love that concept and in the supernatural world anything is possible so in terms of a dream role it'd be something with supernatural i i, I truly enjoy that maybe my own series or honestly i i know this pertains to what we're talking about but i i I would have killed to been able to do the second and third film, or even just do another Ben 10 movie with today's CGI. It would be it would be mind blowing. The the budget that we had on our first film for CGI was amazing. I mean, it was huge. So what they could do today with that would be mind boggling. It would be it would look so cool. I've seen you in a lot of supernatural stuff, especially Teen Wolf. You were on for like uh, 40 how many episodes? About 40. Yeah, something like oh, four or five years. What was shooting some of that stuff like? I mean, I loved it. Again, I was beyond blessed to be on another show with a bunch of actors who are talented with their heads screwed on correctly. So. Again, every day going to set, it was just like fun. And again, the supernatural world. So so every episode was completely different, something new, something crazy, something exciting, a new monster, a new threat. I find it fascinating. I'm, I, I'm a huge fan of that stuff. Did any of the uh, cast or crew on Teen Wolf recognize you from Ben 10 at all? Yeah, so Froy, who, uh, who who was on, on Team Wolf, was a huge Ben 10 fan. So it was super funny, like, when I, I was doing uh, working with him, and eventually he smiled, and he's like, okay, I have to tell you this, like, I'm just a huge Ben 10 fan. And he pulled out of his backpack an Omnitrix, and I was like, no way! <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and we laughed. He's just a huge fan, uh, Ben 10 fan. When you started doing YouTube, what, what led you to that uh, decision? With COVID happening, a lot of shows shut down. Um, auditions are, you know, I used to be extremely busy with auditions and now it's finally starting to come back, but it's, it's not what it was. So actors, including myself, we just have a little extra free time and by a little in the beginning, it was a lot. So I was trying to come up with creative ways to stay engaged with your fans and also, you know, continue having a creative output. Um, and I've tried some other things and YouTube just seems like the best fit. You know, I try to release my videos on Friday. So far, it seems to be working. I had one hiccup. Uh, I had a week where I was just slammed. The community is amazing, and it's it's uh, you know you guys know it's 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 really easy to interact with your with your channel um, comments. People you know if it, you know there's ideas where I kind of had a little bit of that idea or mentioned a little bit, and then you read the comments and someone elaborates on that, makes it even better. You're like, oh, why didn't I think of that? That's brilliant. You know, so it's kind of a, a collaboration and. Um, I don't know, it's just fun. Do you think you're gonna keep up with the weekly videos? I'm gonna try. I mean, listen, easier <laughs> said than done. I'm gonna try to keep doing it every Friday. It's still, things are still somewhat slower because of COVID. So if things get back to normal and it's, uh, I'm slammed with with auditions or, you know, that's the goal as an actor, you wanna be constantly auditioning or getting on another project. You know, I wish I started this back uh, when I was on Team Wolf because I could have done some really cool behind the scenes stuff and things like that. So the goal is to keep it going. Um, obviously, if you get busy, you're gonna have to make adjustments. Maybe I maybe I change to two videos a month or something like that. But at the moment, I'm really enjoying it. No, yeah, you seem to be having fun with it. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm liking your uploads. Uh, do, you, do you have a favorite video you have out so far? My favorite video is always the one I just do. Because <laughs> it's the one you're working on and then you watch it and it's nice. Um, but I would say I, I can't do them all the time. I did one video where it's more of like a, a movie type thing. Um, the day in the life of a quarantine actor I had. The puddle of drool from a mediocre night's sleep dictates my face, effectively removing the coating of my highly detailed skin regimen. A constant battle between growing older, but trying to look like I can play a teenager on film. I had a lot of fun with doing that because it's like a mini, uh, kind of like a short film. Um, and I can't do that all the time. I have a, a, a partner who's very creative and, and he runs ideas and so it's, it takes more thought process than just uh, coming up with something and trying to get a bit, you know, so I have more coming, but it's, it takes more time. Naturally, when life throws you lemons, you head to lemonade to get some lemonade, to keep the mind, body, 
and skin complexion nice and tight for your Hollywood line of work. Thank you for coming on to the channel today. We really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, is there any final words you want to say to the fans before we head out? No, just over the years, thank you guys for the love and support. Uh, your channel's amazing. I, I was I was looking through it all today. Uh, keep it up. I'm, I'm gonna be a, I'm a fan now. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, before we go, do you think we could get a it's hero time from you? <laughs> it's hero time. Nice. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Take care. Take care. Big thanks again to Ryan Kelly for coming on our channel. Don't forget to check out Ryan Kelly's YouTube channel. A link will be down below and let him know that the Ink Tank sent you. Ryan said he'd be down to come on the channel again in the future. So if he does, what kind of video should we make with him? Let us know in the comments below. But until then, you can stay up to date with everything we do on our social medias and join the Discord for some fun community interaction. You can also join the Patreon for exclusive weekly updates on all of our upcoming projects such as Five Years Later and and beyond. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And as always, Keep it fizzy.